In this video, we describe the solution to the Schrodinger equation of a system called the harmonic oscillator. Right, the harmonic oscillator uh, can be envisioned as the following. Suppose that you have a mass connected to a wall through a spring, okay? and uh, then what you're going to do is examine how the motion of this mass, as if oscillates around an equilibrium position, is from a quantum mechanics perspective. Okay? Um, the mass of the particle is called m. And again, the idea here is to uh, set up and solve the uh, Schrodinger equation to try to understand a little bit how this motion takes place. It's a one-dimensional problem because the motion only takes place in one direction, in this case, left to right, which we're going to call the x-axis. Okay, so the first thing that we have to do is uh, write the Schrodinger equation, as always. And then we have to think about the harmonic oscillator. Uh, not the harmonic oscillator, but the Hamiltonian operator. Right, the Hamiltonian operator has two terms, uh, a kinetic energy term and a potential energy term. The kinetic energy term is identical to the one that we have seen for the particle in a 1D box model, because the motion is only along one dimension, the x-axis. Okay, so the kinetic energy term uh, looks like this, minus h squared over a pi squared m, and then take the second derivative of the wave function with respect to the direction of motion, which in this case is the x. Now, the first difference with respect to the particle in a 1D box model is that in the particle in a 1D box model, the potential inside the box felt by the particle was zero. But in this case, that will not be the case, because you have a spring right here. Okay? If you pluck this mass away from the, uh, from the wall, the energy will go up. And if you try to compress uh, this spring a little bit, the energy will also go up. As a matter of fact, this is a harmonic oscillator. We actually know how the energy changes uh, according to the uh, displacement from an equilibrium point. Okay? As a matter of fact, what happens is that uh, the harmonic oscillator potential has this form. This is Hooke's law. Okay, one half times the force constant of the spring times uh, the coordinate squared. Okay, so if the coordinate is zero, we're going to assume that zero is that the equilibrium situation, and then uh, larger or smaller would mean that the energy uh, goes up. As a matter of fact, we can actually plot how this uh, energy, this potential energy, looks like. Okay, you will have something like this. This will be the equilibrium situation, and then uh, the potential energy will increase quadratically with the displacement around the equilibrium uh, configuration. Okay, that is the harmonic oscillator. Right, so what that means is that we actually now have, uh, in the Hamiltonian operator, we have a kinetic energy term and a potential energy term. So the Zollinger equation turns into minus 8 squared over 8 pi squared m. Take the second derivative of the wave function with respect to uh, x. And then to this, you have to add now your uh, potential energy term, 1 half vx squared. And all of these have to be applied to the wave function and when you do that, you will get the energy times the wave function. Okay, so that is the Schrodinger equation that we have to solve. And again, this is just a one-dimensional problem, but it has the complication that we have a potential energy term. Okay, so in this video, we're not going to solve explicitly uh, the Schrodinger equation. Instead, we're going to look at the solutions and see if we can interpret them and learn from them. We will pay particular attention to comparing and contrasting what we get here for the harmonic oscillator and what we obtained in a prior video for the particle in a 1D box. All right, so solution of that expression is going to give us the energy of the system and the um, wave function of the system. All right, so the energy of the system uh, looks like this. Energy is going to be equal to uh, V plus 1 half times H nu vid, okay, where this V is a quantum number. Okay, minus is what we have for the particle in a 1D box that goes from zero all the way to infinity, and it has to be an integer number. Okay, this is the vibrational frequency of this uh, mass. Okay, so this new if that frequency is how many times per second uh, the oscillator is moving around the equilibrium situation. Okay, and there's an equation for that. New if happens to be. 1 over 2 pi square root of the force constant times uh, over the mass of the spring. Okay? 
This force constant is the same one that applies in the potential energy expression for the harmonic oscillator, and it simply is a measure for how stiff the spring is. If the spring is very stiff, then the uh, force constant will be very high, and some slight deformations around the equilibrium situation will give rise to very sharp increases in the energy. If the spring is very loose, then uh, the force constant will be very, very low, and what will happen is that, well, it doesn't take much energy to deform uh, this, this spring. Right, so uh, now we can, uh, with this energy expression, we can now uh, try to establish comparison with uh, what we obtained for the particle in a one box model. Okay, so both solutions, okay, both models are quantized. Okay, they depend on a quantum number that is integer. In this case, it's called the V quantum number. In the case of the harmonic oscillator, we call it, uh, of the particle in a one box model, we call it the N uh, quantum number. But again, both of them are integer and uh, have values that uh, go, uh, in this case, from zero all the way to infinity. In the case of the particle in a one box, from one all the way to infinity. So infinite solutions, but the energies uh, that this harmonic oscillator can have are very well defined by this expression. Okay, so that is the first uh, uh, similarity with the uh, particle in a one box model. The second is that the energy is never zero, even when there's no thermal energy around. Okay, so the lowest energy possible of this system would be the one where you have the lowest quantum number, V0. But if you place here, uh, you replace this, exp uh, this V by zero, you will get that the energy of V0, which is the lowest possible that you can have, will be one half H negative. Okay? So much as in the particle on a 1D box, the energy of this uh, quantum uh, uh, oscillator is actually never zero, even if you're at the zero Kelvin uh, of temperature. Okay, and again, this is something common to uh, most quantum systems. Right, so those are uh, similarities and differences. Now, uh, we can actually go uh, and try to understand a little bit better how this energy scale works. Okay, uh, we can actually, uh, if this is the potential energy uh, of the harmonic oscillator, we can actually see that the energy of the V0 level will be right here. Okay, so that corresponds to the V0. And this will be the energy that you will just have right here, one half H in the V. But if we were to replace V1 uh, on this expression, then we could calculate the energy of the first excited state, which is the second state overall. Okay, and that energy might be out here, okay, V1. Okay, do the same thing, uh, V is equal to two, you will have it right here. That will be uh, the solution for V is equal to two, that will be V equal to three, V equal to four, and so forth. Okay, so something interesting here that is uh, different from what we saw uh, in the particle one box model is that these energy uh, separations between the consecutive states are actually constant. Okay, in the, in the particle one box model, they actually increase quadratically so that uh, when you have larger numbers, you have larger separation between uh, consecutive uh, uh, states than when you have low quantum numbers. That's not the case in the harmonic oscillator, and again, that's just a consequence from the fact that the potential uh, is not zero. It actually depends quadratically on distance like this. Okay, so that is a, a, a difference with uh, the particle and water box model. Now, uh, the energy uh, term is only one of the solutions to the general equation. We also have that uh, we have to examine what the wave function looks like. And the wave function uh, is actually complicated and we're not going to uh, uh, have to learn it. Okay, but for the first state, it turns out that this is proportional to a Gaussian function. Okay, so it will, be, it will look something like this. And the question is, well, how does this look like, uh, how does that, uh, that uh, uh, Gaussian function look like in this scale? Well, it turns out that, let me actually uh, make this a little larger so that you can see it better. Uh, so we, we, we draw the same thing, uh, but now uh, we draw here what the wave function should look like for um, the f first state v0, second state v1, third state v2, fourth state v3, okay, that's v is equal to zero. This is going to be a Gaussian function that looks more or less like this. Okay, for v1, okay, this changes a little bit. And uh, the way that this wave function looks like is like this. Okay, for V3, it's going to be something like that. And you can see uh, how this would uh, continue for V4, V5, V6, and so forth. Okay, so these wave functions actually look very similar.
to the ones that we had for the particle in a 1D box uh, model. Okay, in that well, the first solution does not have any nodes. The second, uh, the second state has one node right here. The first state has two nodes, and so forth. Okay. Now, of course, uh, the wave function by itself does not tell you much. Uh, the property of the wave function that is related to probability is the wave function squared. Okay. So what we can actually do is repeat this uh, plot, but drawing the wave function squared as opposed to just the wave function. Okay. So uh, let me see if I can actually draw that a little better. Okay, so that would be x, that would be x, and that is the equilibrium distance of the um, harmonic oscillator. Okay, uh, the potential energy looks something like this. Okay, and then you will have here the first state, v0, v1, v2, v3. Okay, so when we square the wave function, the way that this is going to look like then is something like that. Uh, should be centered around the middle of the box. It's a little hard to draw here. And then the first wave function, this, the first excited wave function looks like this. The second V3 looks like this. And so forth. Okay, so much as before, uh, with the particle and a one box model, we have something that resembles quite a bit what we had. In this case, these are not signed functions, they're actually uh, Gaussian functions. Okay, so the first uh, uh, solution turns out that uh, the oscillator, while it's oscillating, is more like, most likely to be found right around the equilibrium situation, and very low probability to have it when the um, uh, spring is outstretched or compressed. Okay, the probability decays like this. However, if the uh, harmonic oscillator is in the V1 state, which is the first excited state, not the lowest energy state, but the sec second lowest, okay, it turns out that uh, while it's vibrating, it's oscillating around the equilibrium situation, it has a zero probability to be right at the center of this uh, the equilibrium situation, okay, when x is equal to zero. And again, when you go to uh, V2, there's two nodes, You'll, for V3 you will have uh, three nodes and so forth. Okay, so much with the particle in a one d box model, you have the, the number of nodes in the probability distribution in the wave function, okay, that also increases linearly with the quantum number, so that the first solution does not have any nodes, and then uh, as you move uh, forward to higher uh, quantum numbers, you have increasingly uh, an increasingly larger number of nodes. Okay? So again, something that is very difficult for us to understand is how is it possible that uh, the oscillator is actually moving like this? That's the motion that we should have, expect to see uh, uh, in a classical sense. And yet, if it's in this state, which is the uh, one of lowest energy, of second lowest energy, Okay, it's doing that, but it's never passing through the equilibrium situation, which will be right this point. Okay, so again, can go uh, left to right, but again, what this probability distribution tells us is that it will never be found right at this particular point. Okay, so again, that's something that is very difficult to reconcile with what we know about uh, how springs uh, move, but it's, it's a quantum mechanical consequence that we actually know is true. Okay, so this has served as an introduction to the harmonic oscillator. We have examined here the energy expressions, and we have looked at the wave functions and the probability distributions to try to see similarities and differences with the particle in a one box model. In the next video, we're actually going to uh, do uh, an application of this model to an actual system.